Welcome, my name is Emma Gladstone and I'm the Artistic Director and Chief Executive of Dance Umbrella. And for our digital festival this November, we are running um, a series of three choreographers cut, uh, which is a chance for choreographers to share some of their process in the making of a clip that they've chosen of their work, um, for us to understand more um, about the making of that work. And I'm really delighted to welcome today um, Una Doherty. Uh, Una is a choreographer and a performer based in Northern Ireland. And uh, she's uh, an award-winning artist, but she's been touring all around, um, especially um, widely across Europe. Um, and we had the pleasure of presenting um, two of her works in the festival last year in 2019. Um, so very warm welcome to Una. Thank you, um, Emma. <laughs> I think you um, are in Belfast now, are you? Just outside of Belfast, in Bangor, County Down, about half right. an hour from Belfast. Yeah. Great. Well, I'm in deepest Devon, so um, one of the upsides of this strange um, pandemic we find ourselves in, that we can chat away remotely like this wherever we are. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Thank you very much for agreeing to take part and I'd love you to just introduce a bit about the piece that you want to um, talk about. With us. I think today we're going to watch Helium, which is episode four of my Hard to be Soft series. That was a dance show about Belfast and it's the last scene in that show, um, a, a solo. This is one that you, you've performed as well as working with a dancer on it, haven't you? So I think the video we'll watch today is the original version, which is Ryan O'Neill performing. It was made for Ryan. Yeah. Because there's a Zen softness about him, so he was able to fall over as if he's in lim as if he's in limbo or purgatory. And then as what always happens with me is when I make a solo for a friend, is they go off and get another job. So he went to Shanghai with bloody punch drunk. <laughs> so I had to do his solo for him. But then I get to learn what I've made on someone else. And now he's taken the solo back. Nice. And we just had rehearsals last week for it. So then it's really tasty rehearsals because you've both been in the sweat room with it. So yes. you can really get very deep with like conversations about corrections and stuff. We had the pleasure of seeing you do it. But then it's touring um, going forwards, is it? You've got Hopefully, plans for that's the plan. Okay. We should do it next Great. year. Good. Well, um, let's dive in. Should we have a look at the video? Oh, you know what? I'll say one thing before we look at the video, just so mm. that we can let the beginning of it play a bit. Okay. And because it, it, in the live show, you might not get it so much in the video that we have a blackout. Mm -hmm. We have a moment of silence. And then we have smack. Uh, a man lands on the floor, which you might get a little bit of in the video, but you miss it a little bit. You get it more live when you're in the room. Right. Um, so I just wanted to say that. I think. Okay. And there's, this is a solo. There's a solo at the beginning as well. So the piece tops and tails, doesn't it, with solos? Tops and and, and it's kind of a version of the same solo over mm. and over again. So it's a man like, you know, like a a, a, a goldfish in a fish in a in a in a bowl. The mm -hmm. man realizing that he's in purgatory. Great. Well, let's hear a bit more. Let's have a look. So I'll just talk you through what Ryan's thinking. He's just been smack hit by a car. And he wakes up and everything hurts. And he wakes up and he's in a bright white limbo. He doesn't know where he is. And then that cello is all of the bones turning into light. So the whole state here, he's building up slowly in the score 
it's him, his consciousness coming back and kind of being like, where the fuck am I? Mixed with all of his bones kind of uh, evaporating into light because he's transcending, he's, he's dying, I guess. So that's the... He's playing with the, the characterization of the man and then this fluid somatic yawn into the cosmos. Wow, there he goes. getting a bit pissed off because he's lost, he's confused, he doesn't know what's happening. But even like your anger movements start to like transcend and get soft and they get a bit dancey. But it's like the dancey version is the let go and the accepting into dying, but you fight it off the last white knuckles before your last breath. He had a broken toe when he did this. This is a memory. So he falls into a memory of his past and he's talking to, through the bars of Hyde Bank Prison to the screw. And then that all fades away. And that's a Belfast dander. It's a type of walk that you do in the street in Belfast. It's called a dander. So now in the, in the score, he's mixing three things. The, the resistance of wanting to still be alive and be an angry man, the, the white light, somatic, soft transcendence, and the flaring up of like your past, your memories. Almost like little snippets of theatrical scenes and then back into kind of chaos a bit. There, he's his mum, he's got high heels on. That's him being his mum. Yes, maybe I'll just say that we kept trying to learn how to fall over properly, keep falling over, falling over, because when a really trained dancer properly falls over, they have a moment of real submission, no control, which is sometimes hard to do on stage when you're a dancer because you always land on your legs proper. That's him telling the child to get back into the house. And here we kind of set this thing of like, um, you kind of look around, you laugh at limbo, like I know what this is, like Big Brother. And then you realise it's limbo and the laugh just keeps on going until it turns into a cry. You know, you're not going to see anyone anymore. But even for the audience, they don't know that. They just, you can just see the difference from the back of someone, the difference between a laugh and a cry. Everyone knows that, doesn't matter what the story is. And this was, this was Ryan's last night in Belfast before he went to Shanghai. trying to fall, he's trying to be submission. There's a memory, he's fighting in the street.
microphone. He picks up a microphone just to speak to God. And then he becomes a flashback of his whole life. That's a nine o'clock news. But then this is this is the bit that we call Lazarus. It's the same as the beginning of the show, like ABA choreography. We learnt that in GCSE, and it never goes away. At the beginning, at the end. And this was the first time Ryan ever did the show. I was in Belfast and then he left the next night, he got on a flight. to go go into crying and then turn the crying into laughing the reverse of the previous walk backwards he does a couple of different kind of like we call them like renaissance tableaus people from belfast and they say like well, you see the white light when you're dying so it's like he's walking backwards he's saying okay all right i'll die now i'll let go i'll let go so throwing a brick at the police the child over. Being your auntie. Angel Gabriel. And then you say thanks very much darling. I got lots of questions from it. You know, it's so. Um, what? What? There's many things I find really interesting, but what, one of them is the mixture that you've got in there of despair and anger with celestial thoughts, and and so I suppose, yeah. One of my questions is it, on that particular thing. I mean, it it runs through the piece in different ways, I suppose. But for that particular solo. Um, 
the the music seems really crucial in that and so I, I wondered first of all how you how you work with the music because the sound score especially with the first solo is so that incredible the voices and the editing and how that's used but with this one it's pure I mean there is there's some of that text that comes back in but it's mainly um, musical that has an ethereal nature that goes on after this doesn't it when it actually goes into more ecclesiastical music I suppose for the very very end but for this bit you said something about the cello evaporating his bones or something when the cello comes in and I just wondered how you work on that in the in the creation and I suppose the other question is all the all the body language that you talk about that is the a lot of it is personal characters or people and are they drawn did you did you devise that with Ryan or is it done do, do you conceive those characters or those sections when it gets more theatrical beforehand or are they done in the studio so two questions there really. yeah so to answer the first one about the music I'll just go back and explain Lazarus because I've been dancing to like holy music for ages so Aoife Makatamni made a project a few years ago with a really intense like choreographic task for dancers which is a bit kind of Deborah Hay inspired to get dancers into a meditative state where they feel like they've actually never moved before and we did it to like there was the sound score was like people playing computer games going oh my god wow and you'd be like wow i'm lifting my knee and be really amazed by it which sounds it was really intense and everyone was like laughing or crying like we really managed to get into like a feel like a brand new baby because Aoife had a book which was the story of the bibles told through women and Lazarus was Jesus's best mate so I know this is a really long answer but trust me Lazarus was Jesus's best mate and Lazarus got sick while Jesus was away on his healing magical mystery tour and Lazarus had two sisters and they kept trying to call Jesus to come back and will you heal Lazarus stop healing other people you need to come back and heal Lazarus but he got there too late and Lazarus was dead and in those days you could only visit the body up to the first three days because it was hot and you didn't want to see someone after that and Jesus was like no 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 don't worry about it open the cave and healed Lazarus and brought Lazarus back to life and then carried on the magical mystery tour and then in this version of the book it was it was written like or what I remember of it was like, yeah, Lazarus was like a big 32 year old man with a brand new nervous system, you know, like a baby who didn't know how to piss or walk. So this, his sisters had to kind of move this weight around. And then as a, you know, like as a professional dancer to lie down on the ground and then try and really start from there again. Mm. Like if you didn't know how to land on your leg, and so that we, and then I did that for like a year, two years. I did that in like improvising with holy music on to make it feel epic, <laughs> to try and feel dancing again. And then we did that with, and then we did that with um, Ryan in falling, like that moment of falling over and really not knowing where you're going. And then holy music really helped feel that. Mm -hmm. the, and, and not that we were thinking about, I don't know if we're, I'm, I would actually say I'm religious or or believe in God, but like your body's amazing or something and trying to get into that space while you're dancing. So it's not just like aesthetic and ego or something. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I suppose it's just so interesting. The juxtaposition between the two is something that that music gives a lot of space for us to look at him the the dynamics within what he's created with you there and it's just a, interesting when it's some of it's very recognizable um anger or um brawling or just images that we know like you know you talked about the back about everybody recognizing that thing of when you go from um laughing to crying and then when you do it the other way around he's also facing the other way around but it's I suppose I just think it, it creates a lot of space for us to see um, what he's doing but it's so strangely placed because I hadn't got into that idea that it might be a, a sort of 
um, a death, a dance of dying, I, I saw a strangeness that I suppose is the limbo that you talked about, but it's just an interesting mix just to put that kind of heightened music against it. And it's, it's something that I feel like sound and text is such a key part to what you choreograph too, but also on top of. And so in that particular solo, it's interesting, I, I suppose, to see the spaciousness of the music with a lot of recognisable, quite theatrical movement mixed into the choreography. It lets it resonate um, interestingly, I think. So, I, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm interested if that came, yeah, I suppose, yeah, which comes first or whether you do it together or if it evolves as you go along kind of together i suppose but like even before i was working with ryan and all the lazarus solo had already existed so i was always mm. already playing with like mixing streets uh, lads fighting in the street with holy music yeah and i was already making like photo collages of like um people fighting the police in belfast with holy music because they look like caravaggio paintings when you have a riot all that which is like even more intense now with all the photos and stuff yeah and just your other question there was about the characters and i guess the characters was a mixture of me providing a lot of photos and stuff of riots and different things from belfast to ryan like making a collage of all those things for him and then trusting that he that he's because he's from Belfast too and he knew what I what I what I meant so he would embody those characters of the images I've given him to begin with but then the more you drill and drill and drill the dance and make it a mental place the characters will naturally just come out from the body so they will be from his life rather than mine and was there things that you um as you were making it that you I mean you said it existed a bit before but you do you throw a lot of stuff away as you're making? How do you layer Not it? Not really. Not and really. how do you do structure it? it? Does it evolve? I'm really bad at structuring. So I come with a very well out, well planned out, detailed poem choreographic score, mm -hmm. like shot by shot, like a film, what you're going to shoot and what you're going to feel as the character. Mm. And then on top of that is just an improvised school. You know what so, I mean? But so with, so in terms of with making that with Ryan, then you had a clear, you had a really clear frame in which to ask him to realize it. I think I like all the kind of like the intentions I was saying over the top of the video that kind of would have already been there. Yeah as that would be my invitation of him into the room. Mm. And then together we had to work out like, should we go from stage left to stage right? And should we have that diagonal more micro in the feeling than the last diagonal kind of thing? So it's just the, the arc of the whole thing. Mm. But I would have had step by step the intention to give him. Now I give him the intention. I don't know if that means his left arm's going to lift or his you know, right knee's going to drop. Yeah. But I give him the intention, then he lets it come out in his body. And did, so you say that it doesn't change. I suppose I, want, I wonder about the frame, the frame in your head or the filmic idea of it. When the physical reality comes, if it usually stays true or if it bends or breaks in any way when you when you see the physical reality of where you land i don't know i think when i'm performing it i have to set it really like my left finger then my ear and i have to have it exactly the same every time i need to practice it all the time mm. so that when then then when i perform it i only think about the cinematic and the, the knee and everything happens on time yeah so for me i drill it that way and but Ryan, I, mean, I think Ryan's probably the same. He has to set it really strict that all the arms and legs are the same. But not, I suppose I'm not thinking so much once it's set as the choreography, but in the, in the making of it, that I suppose, is there a gap between that original conception and the frame and the reality of where you land? I know once it's there, I can understand that precision being needed because it looks 
open in the sense of, I don't know, casual is completely not the right word, but there's a kind of freedom to it, but actually it is really carefully um, devised. But I meant more when you come into the studio to work with him, does it stay pretty true to what that cinematic idea that you had before? I mean, maybe not just with this solo, but more widely, does it, do you shift yeah. things a lot? It when depends on the one. I think with Ryan, it maybe stayed a bit more sit like we didn't go too far mm. because he's like that level of a dancer and it's a mm. solo. So you're one on one, you can explain it and he can really embody it. So you don't go too far from the idea in your head. Mm. But it depends. Like I'd say, like another show like Magma would have ended up very different from what I had the movie I'd seen in my head. Mm. Or Sugar yeah. Army ended up a bit different, the one before with the girls because mm. you have to some, at a certain point sometimes you have, it depends if you're working with pe more people you, you have to let go of yeah. the film sometimes because you're, you, there's people in front of you but also I suppose the expertise of the dancer because Ryan's so one of those people where it's so evocative I mean you can recognise and identify with so much of what he's doing it might not be your original intention or that what did you call it renaissance the images at the end of what you see but actually there's so much to take so much meaning to take from it and it's it's partly with a dancer that is that skilled that there's so many stories coming out through his body that um i think it allows it to, to resonate really strongly because of that ability to em embody it i mean it takes a little bit back to that somatics thing you were talking about and just how you um yeah how you inhabit what the ideas or the images or the people that are coming through you. i think mufasa who's the hope hunter now and sati who's the next hope hunter they have it too and i'm only yeah. starting to learn like what kind of a taste of performer that i'm interested in mm. and i think i'd much rather have a performer who like can concentrate you know concentrate on one ab and squeeze one ab to get a character out almost yeah. in like lecoq like clown mm. style mm. like that in and out for me is m more interesting than architectural range yeah it's a, it's an interesting different kind of technique i think in a way actually and and it's also there's a kind of honesty it's that thing about mm, believing what that person is doing or the state that they're in or who they're being that is it goes beyond logic in a way but you trust them yeah and i think he he has that in this solo and and you do too when you're doing it. It's it's a, it has an elegiac quality that um, the music helps us helps us ride along that. I think, but it's something really important in the responsibility of the performer that's doing it each time. I think, and it's really visible in his in his performance in this in this clip. Um, yeah, it's 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 good to see it again. What do you think about it now? looking at it because when did you make it 2017 a couple of years ago three years ago and that was his first that video that we watched was his first performance yeah i can't believe that you just said that and i thought wow so he so literally premiered the show and then went off to shanghai i think he did two nights at the mac and he flew okay. out the next night yeah. with a broken toe that was probably a lot sorer yeah after and he that had a broken toe because i was trying to keep the warm-up interesting for the sugar army so i made them stand in between the rows of the seats and do their batmons and the first batmon he went whack and he didn't say anything to the after the second night of course he didn't he just performed my god <laughs> so the tears are real <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so looking at it that like, and then that being the very first show, and then me yeah. doing it for like a, a, a few shows in different yeah. countries and stuff, yeah, and not. now him taking it back. Yeah, there's a there's a there's another even layer of spice that's even more refined to it that I saw last week in the studio. Lovely, that's not on the video, but yeah. that's that's a nice thing about solos. Like do a solo and then don't touch it for a year and then go back. It's gonna mm. be it's like leaving a curry to sit overnight. Yeah. But I think, I don't know, you know, it's like when I look at that work and I think of your pieces, then they, first of all, they, 
they are interesting, they are political, but to have those have those works of art on film and to have them documented even now, to be looking at them, it, they're important. They're, they speak to people, I think. They speak to me, certainly, and to many others, according to, you know, the recognition that you've had recently. So I, there, there, isn't, there is an importance there about people's um, emotions, I think, and seeing stuff that is about feeling and not about viruses or... Things. Yeah, but it's just like, nat I mean, also th my natural thing next was to be like, okay, we'll put more dancers on stage. What is it to work with a group? Mm. And I still believe that like me and loads of people would be able to make a piece of work with a group of people that was really sincere, that was honest that was about humanity and everything. But the reality is, is like, how big does the budget need to be? And where do you fly people in? And do people sit in the, the you know, all the logistics around, like the yeah. money of making a show? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, it's like that is that ha is the question. Mm. And that's a good thing to have to reel everything back to be like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. they're big questions. They're big questions, maybe we don't have time to touch on them right now it's another podcast emma yeah, it's another <laughs> one but anyway <laughs> um thank you so much it's really it's just fascinating to hear your thinking and to see the images and ideas and thoughts and sort of place even if that place was a kind of limbo place for where he was dancing and yeah i found it fascinating to understand it more so yeah big thank you for sharing that with us thanks for inviting me em Pleasure. Thanks to Rob and Ben for being amazing on the recording too. Good. Lots of love to you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>